You are Locked On Rays, your daily Tampa Bay Rays podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, my name is Kevin Weiss. I'm Ulysses Sombrano. And we're the host of the Locked On Rays podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Thank you for making Locked On Rays your very first listen every day. And remember, Locked On Rays is free and available on all platforms, including YouTube at Locked On Rays. Be sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Locked On Rays. And you can email us anytime, Locked On Rays at gmail.com. Well, Ulysses, the weekend series versus the Yankees started off on a good note on Friday, and then things sputtered from there on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, should we start with the good or the bad? I'll let you take over and decide where we go from here. Let's start with the bad because then we can pick it up. Uh, I, I think that sounds that's, good. That's a- it's a better one. Look, the division was fun for two weeks to talk about. It really was. And, and it got your heart uh, going a little bit. I said, if they're within five on September 1st, it's, it's go time. They weren't, but they made it after a couple of days after that. Uh, so, yeah, it was fun to talk about the division. I, I feel like the fact that, that we actually got to talk about the division still in being in play in September was pretty huge given that they had a 15 game lead as late as August 1st. Uh, the, the Yankees stayed on, on, on the Rays and basically on mm-hmm. the rest of the division too. So the fact that we were talking division in September, I think it just shows you how well the Rays played, how big the collapse has been uh, for the Yankees. So, but I think we should just, turn the page on that and 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 i think the rays did that quite quickly with kluber and both patino turning the page like you needed the sweep you needed the sweep in order to like make it tangible yeah right. you could win the series and then and then still be like okay we're still you know but it was the sweeping effect that would have given you the 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 wherewithal to take over for the division you don't have that anymore let's stop talking about the division because i think that's over which outing was more disheartening if you're a Rays fan? Luis Patino on Sunday or Corey Kluber on Saturday? Ooh, good question. Good question. I think the Kluber one felt a little bit harsher because he's the veteran. He right. had been so good against the Yankees. And then there's also that Yankee taunt saying uh hey he's a spy for us haha <laughs> see hey he's actually yeah. ours he's actually helping us that that kind of stinks a little bit um with patino dude he's like 22 or or going to be 23 so like everybody i've seen so many people bashing luis patino like the dude is like a year older than 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 wander and yeah most guys his age are in double a yeah, exactly like i think he's actually one year older than than tosh bradley yeah like let's put things into context i know people are upset with him because you know he didn't have any sort of command and uh no pitch of his was actually like sharp at all i mean kyle snyder was pretty livid in in the dugout maybe not because of that but i mean i mean you can put two and two together uh he was pretty livid look uh, it sucks it happened to luis patina but i'm not going to you know say Oh my God, this guy's never going to be what he's going to be like. That's ridiculous. Yeah. I just think that we maybe expected more because there is and was so much hype surrounding Luis Patino, but we have to understand his age and development process. And uh, as of right now, he he's not on the playoff roster, right? Are we in agreement on that? Yeah. 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 I, I, th- I think there are arms above yeah. him right now. Yeah. Credit to uh, Ryan Yarbrough though, for, cleaning up that game because that can be a situation where you're using seven, eight guys and Yarbrough coming out with the, the five inning to, to salvage some guys for the big road trip versus the blue Jays. But um, yeah, again, Luis Patino, it's going to be a learning growing process. And uh, as, as much as the Yankees have struggled, this is one of the best home teams in baseball in the Yankees, they're 50 and 22 at home. And uh it's not easy when you're 22 years old and, and 
pitching September baseball against the Yankees in Yankee Stadium, and you're facing the likes of Judge Stanton, Torres, and all the uh, all the history and all the the significance that surrounds a moment like that. You you talk about names above maybe Patino, uh, Ryan Yarbrough. Yeah. I mean, who does Rays Nation want to take into a playoff roster where you need both guys? Do you take Ryan Yarbrough or do you take Luis Patino? The guy who's experienced, too. That's a big deal in the playoffs. Battle tested. Now, I know I I don't think Ryan Yarbrough was on the postseason roster last year, but this is a guy that has how many hundreds of innings to his belt already? And he was in the playoffs in 2019 and he was in the playoffs in 2020. So, like, I, 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 I don't. Yeah. Ryan Yarbrough right now is above Luis Patino in the pecking order for, for that bulk role if needed in, in, in the playoff roster for sure. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Did you know that every week, nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on MLB. That's linkedin.com slash locked on MLB to post your job for free terms and conditions apply. All right, let's let's go to a positive angle of things. I guess on Saturday and Sunday, if you want to look at it, not many people were probably watching those games because uh, it was college football on Saturday and it was NFL on Sunday. Uh, at least if you're in the state of Florida, maybe you had your mind uh, deferred and distracted towards other things there. But I guess the the highlight that we would have to mention is what transpired on Friday evening for the race. Yeah, and it, w- it was great to see Drew Rasmussen come out and and give the team a chance for that sweep, right? And career high in strikeouts, the dude definitely was showing up his uh, his newfound father power. Um, that was pretty cool. 10Ks, he looked good. I mean, he he's looked yeah. so good in the last, like, month and a half. I mean, he's been impressive. He he looks like a top of the, 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 the rotation kind of guy. I mean, this is how good he has been. Kevin. Yeah, and that cutter, too so deceptive with the last second drop on it and Mm -hmm. the arm action and arm speed in comparison to his fastball, because every time it comes out of his hand, hitters got to be thinking that's 96, 97 mile an hour here. And I can hit that thing. And then it uh, drops off the table. So that was a, I don't know what the total count was of strikeouts from the cutter, but I would imagine it was a pretty heavy amount um, and I guess one thing to consider or think about is, you know, in a playoff series, who would be that game one starter? Would it, Drew, is it Drew's to lose as of right now? We have to see how Shane McClanahan does coming back or if there's some other maneuvering that the Rays may consider or think about, but he's pitching like an ace certainly at this juncture. Yeah, no. And I guess it all depends on how many innings does Shane um get to pitch before yeah. the the playoffs because if if you, you do you write your hot hand or the guy who's probably going to be a top four finish in the AL Cy Young it's it's difficult because I don't think Drew Rasmussen would not if if Drew Rasmussen does not get any any top 10 Cy Young finishes I would be I would be shocked that's yeah. how good he's been pitching and once already you 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 got to pitcher of the month award that puts you in the conversation especially so late in the season if you've had a solid season already and he has had that so right i would uh that that's a good uh that's a good one i think uh Kev, kevin cash would opt for shane mcclanahan just because of the optics and you're not just going to be like oh well you were gone for three weeks sorry um i think he would he would still give the hierarchy to to shane but it all depends on the on the matchup on who's the other team. Are they going to be better against the lefty or better against the righty? Uh, that would depend. But he was definitely a a big key performer on Friday on Derek Jeter night, which was great to spoil that for them. Uh, right. But another guy that uh, was just tremendous was Wander Franco. I mean, he comes back without missing a beat. Like how he looked this weekend, by the way, Mm -hmm. tremendous um, pull out by cash on Franco on Sunday. Like, look, it's the fourth inning. It's 10 to one. I'm putting Isak Paredes in here. Wander, come get your rest. Like 
There's no need for you to be playing at a 10 one game. And I completely yeah. agree with that, but and also get Fred some reps too. I mean, that's exactly. also important if he's going to be a part of this team's future. Exactly. No, no, it, it, it is a win-win situation. So wonder Franco definitely coming back and, and hitting the ball like he can gap to gap power uh, just looked really impressive. Like he hadn't missed a day, man. Yeah. And uh, going back to Rasmussen for a second, there is some money at stake in some skills getting the game besides just, you know, wanting to perform as great as possible, but the pre-arbitration bonus pool could be uh, in the cards for maybe both Shane McClanahan and Drew Rasmussen. And that could mean a million, couple million extra bucks. That's pretty big for a guy that, you know, the salary pre-arb is 650, $700,000, whatever it may be. So there's definitely um, something on that radar as far, uh, as far as that's concerned. So, um, are we, are we ending the talk of the Rays taking the division away from the Yankees? The Rays are five and a half back Yankees, 85 and 56 Rays, 78 and 60. As of right now, is this a pipe dream as of, uh, September 12th? It's, it's not a pipe dream, but it's something that you don't have to worry about. Like, I will tell you for the last 10 days before this series, so maybe a couple of days before that TROP Yankee series, since that day, I had been scoreboard watching what the Yankees had been doing. Right. That's that's that that tells you I'm in the division. I want to know what happens. I want to be in it. I I will no longer be scoreboard watching what the Yankees do. I do not care. Yeah. So that's that just is a very clear definitive sign of the most important thing that the race can do right now is get that top wild card spot. That's it. Don't worry about anything else. If you still, if you're still worried about the Yankees division, you are not focusing on the right thing, which is right. We got five games against the Jays in four days and there are actual yeah. competition. The Yankees are no longer your competition, right? That sucks to say. And I know that some race fans are going to be like, what are you talking about? be wrong right you can be wrong but this is the right thing to do is focus on the wild card decision which is focus on what the yeah. world and honestly the, now i mean this is at this point the most important series i mean every series ahead of you is the most important series but yes. as far as jockeying for that wild card position if you're able to steal I'm not going to go crazy here but say you go four and one against the blue jays kick the blue jays in the dirt at home field or, or getting that advantage with the top wild card and again they, they, they say the Yankees do win the division. Looks like they are. So what? Doesn't matter. Just because you win the division does not mean you're going to win the World Series. In fact, it's it's oftentimes the opposite of that. The way it shakes out. So uh, bigger, more important task ahead with this five game set against Toronto. Um, what is your confidence level have, uh, heading into this series, one to ten? Let's also acknowledge that Toronto has been pretty hot as of late, at least in the month of September, going eight and two. Now, some of the competition hasn't been all that special. Uh, they did have four games against the Orioles, I think, and then one series. I mean, they've won all their series in September against the Pirates, the Orioles, and the Rangers, but um, they're definitely in a groove at this point. Hey, that just means that they're doing what they need to be doing. And the Orioles, hey, they were in the, in the, in the fight. They're still in it. Um, I don't think now they're going to get in but they were in it before that series yeah. started. It's It was kind of like what the Yankees and, and the race just did. Like, all right, let's test who's going to be big boy here. The Yankees came out on top mm-hmm. and, and the Jays got on top of, of the Orioles. So, And that's important too, because you get a team like the Orioles in the playoffs, not expecting necessarily to be in the playoffs where they're playing loose. They have not, there's not really any pressure on them of, oh, you know, all these salaries at stake, manager job at stake. It's like, hey, we're just happy to be here. We can play fun. We're a young team. We we don't know our butt from third base, and that can kind of sometimes push you in a forward direction there. But and, and and I'm sure that they that that they have a target on their on their on their clubhouse, which is get to 82 wins. Yeah, they haven't gotten to 82 wins, so they've got something to fight for still, even if it is in the playoffs. Yeah, the playoffs can still be reached, just like the race can still reach the division. But it's kind of more of an afterthought now. It's like if it happens, it happens, but it's not something that's your goal because that's just too lofty, right? Of a goal anymore. So they they've got their eyes set on 82. I believe they're at 73 wins, so they can certainly do so. Um, and so 
I don't. I, I think they they still have one more J series, so they could help out the yeah. Rays in the future. But again, the most important thing that Rays fans need to focus in on is that first top of the wild card. You get home field advantage. You won the Trop Rock, and you got you won Troptober. But you got to get through the Jays here, and you ha- and you have I, f- I believe nine games, and then these five in the next four games in the next four days. So huge series, and I know that you, that you said that it's the biggest series of uh, of the season. You are one hundred percent right because now every series that you go through will be the biggest series. Yes, of, uh, of the year. That's just how it works. You know, right now this is the biggest series. Yeah, and uh, the dynamic between both these teams. I mean, they're pretty well balanced throughout but the blue jays in offensive juggernaut fourth in all of baseball and ops eighth in homers seventh and runs scored and we know the depth and the length of that lineup while the rays we know about the team era top four ranked fourth in baseball right now and um, i know that you know the rays offense if you look at the aggregate numbers from this season not all that great bottom third, but that's missing a big chunk of your run producers throughout most of the season. So uh, this week's team, this month's team is different than uh, some of the middle of the season teams yeah. for the race. So, and I know that um, the blue Jays might be fighting for pitching help a little bit after they had to use six pitchers in a bullpen day the other day as well. Um, and now one, I don't, I don't know how big of an influence or, or determination it will be in this game, but of course the Rays will be without Brooks Raley, uh, due to his unvaccinated status. And as far as I know, he'll be the only one that won't be available. We know about Ryan Thompson as well, but he's on the injured list. Correct. Great news, honestly, to just be losing one player. Yes. I am so happy about that. That only one player is going to be missed uh, again. And it comes from, you know, a, a bullpen that um, needs some f- freshness. So, you know, you, you, right. you get another arm in there, hopefully that to provide some innings, obviously Saturday and Sunday were not planned. So your bullpen's a little bit more exhausted than that you probably wanted it to be for this, you know, five games in four days. But no, tremendous news that there's only one guy that's going to be missing this. And that's that's good news for the race. Yeah. And um, again, if you're just a, a baseball fan in general, this is a fun series because you see two of the game's great shortstops, up and coming shortstops in Wander Franco and Bo Bichette, Bo Bichette, of course, the St. Petersburg native who is killing it this season, 23 home runs, 84 RBI, 279 batting average, and 794 OPS. And it got me thinking, um, I mean, I think we know where we would fall on this answer, but it is interesting to consider and deliberate and think about is who will have the higher career war when it's all said and done. Fast forward 15, 20 years from now, will it be Wander Franco or will it be Bo Bichette, what's crazy, because I did look up the numbers on this. So Wander Franco has a 5.2 war as of today, 21 years old in 195 days. Bo Bichette has a 12.2 war already for his career. He's 24 years old in 191 days. And you might lean, you know, some people may say, oh, maybe, you know, maybe Bo Bichette, but let's also consider Bo Bichette made his debut at 21 years old in 146 days. So, and, and Wander basically at the same age already has a plus five war to his name. Yeah. And it's going to go much higher, assuming he's able to stay healthy. And that's going to be the big key going forward is, um, again, it's still very, very early in, in both these careers, really. But you hope and you believe that wander won't be nagged with injuries year in and year out it won't be a handmaid it won't be a quad it won't be a knee it'll you know you it's never fair to assume but you hope that he can consistently play 145 150 games a season yeah no and uh for for those race fans who just because they're enamored by taylor walls's uh, defense which yeah. is fantastic and also he looked pretty solid at third base this weekend too um they want to just give away shortstop to to waltz instead of wander it's, yeah uh, you're you're crazy it's you don't smart. do that it i mean wander's just going to get better at shortstop and he's already good he's yeah. already good like i think he's already like above average just by a slight smidge 
slight smidge. So he's just going to get above that. Have you seen Bo Bichette? He's gotten better, but I mean, sometimes the the errors he makes are just um, not what you want yeah. from your shortstop. It's so, you don't see those errors from Wander Franco. So right. that to me tells me the war would be elevated towards Wander more than Bichette, maybe gradually because yeah. of the defense um, aspect of it. So no, it's who knows? One, maybe but... both those guys five years from now, maybe both of them are playing third base or second base or something like that. Maybe. Now, let me say this about Taylor walls that um, being able to move from, because he has been playing shortstop for so long and making the switch over to that super utility or infield utility role. Um, assuming, you know, you hope that he's not able to, or doesn't lose a step there, but really I know it probably sucks for him. And, you know, there's the, the, vocal fan base out there too but he for his career in his sake I think it's more important for him to be a guy that can move around from second to third to short and be that um, that versatile presence as opposed to I can play a really great short but I can't really do anything else up to par like I think that holds more value for him if he's not going to carry a bat yeah, especially now with the shifts, uh, you know, being yeah. banned and now needing more athletic guys, you want guys with range. And he even said, I mean, I think he's hyped too. He's like, this could really go- be good for my career because it would put my skills on the spotlight. Like I can get to yeah. that ball. You want me on the field. It doesn't matter that I hit 120 when I'm away and not at the drop. You're going to put me in Yankee Stadium because you want yeah. me to feel those grounders. So. And um, it, good stuff from, from heading a third base, really. Yeah. And it makes it so much, whether it's with the Rays or another team, future plug and play. Oh, our second baseman's injured. That sucks. Well, we just got Taylor Walls. Our shortstop's exactly. injured. What are, Taylor Walls, third baseman, needs a day off. Taylor Walls. There you go. That, uh, that makes it easy for them from that standpoint. So, again, uh, just to run through things here, uh, the Rays play Toronto on Monday night at 7 o'clock. Tuesday, doubleheader, 1 o'clock and 7 o'clock. Wednesday, 7 o'clock. And Thursday, 3 o'clock Eastern time, give or take. So, so and, uh, yeah. all those it's, games should be played on time. There shouldn't be any rain delays, I don't think. There shouldn't be any rain delays. They can close the, the, the roof up there in, 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 in Toronto. Yeah. We do want to tell you, Locked on Race listeners, we are going to be doing two mailbacks. We've gotten a lot of feedback from you guys. So, We're going to do two mailbacks and they will be recorded previously from any Blue Jays game being actually completed. So just so you know, Tuesday and Wednesday, there'll be mailbag. There'll be really good. We're really working on some new stuff for the audio ones. And I think you guys are really going to enjoy that. So two mailbacks coming on Tuesday and Wednesday. We'll we'll be with you on Thursday, hopefully with Evan Klosky. Yeah, that would be nice. Um, Again. Thank you for making the Locked on Race podcast your very first listen every day. Now make your second listen, the Locked on MLB podcast with Soli. Uh, That is also free and available on all platforms. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Stay safe, and we will talk to you on Tuesday. 